Lagoon and Jago's rich lore that has been carefully, mostly carefully, built over the past 12 years is one of the most fun parts of the franchise for me. Seeing how each installment of the storyline keeps building upon the overarching mythos of the franchise has always been a big thing that's kept me coming back to it. I like these kinds of grand storylines. They aren't the main thing keeping me hooked on Ninjago's story, that would be the compelling emotional arcs and quality character work, but the lore is one of my favourite parts of Ninjago. That was why this scene from Dragon's Rising episode 11 really caught my interest. My original plan was to hold off on posting a video talking about this new information until the episode it's from was officially released, but seeing as LEGO has now published the clip themselves on their official YouTube channel, I thought we'd give this scene a look. Because the lore provided to us here changes everything we know about the first Binjutsu Master's history and the scope of what he did during his life. Does that sound interesting to you? If so, then stick around, because we're going to be discussing it and the implications that come of it. So, throughout the entirety of the original LEGO Ninjago series, which in case you don't know goes from the pilot episodes through to crystallized, we were led to believe that the first Benjutsu Master created only the realm of Ninjago after leaving the realm of Oni and Dragon, and that the other 16 realms are all brought into existence by other means. Dragon's Rising has revealed that this is still true for most of the other realms, but it turns out the Spinjitsu Master had more of a hand in the greater universe than we previously thought. The first Spinjitsu Master created other realms. This new information changes everything about his character. It turns out the Spinjitsu Master did so much more than we thought he did in that original show. And that is really interesting to me. I've seen a super mixed response to this clip and I really don't know why. Let me remind you all real quick that the last season of Ninjago revealed that the Overlord can feed off of conflict and vandalism for some reason. Vandalism. Oh my god, bro. To resurrect himself, speeding up what we previously thought to be a generations long reincarnation cycle to being every four years or so. Inadvertently trapping the heroes in a constant cycle of fighting the Overlord over and over again on account of how quickly he can come back. I saw this plot point get no flack from Ninjago fans. I really don't know how you guys let this one off the hook, but the idea that the guy who's known for being able to create realms, made more realms is too much for you is kind of weird to me. Like, of all of the dumb Ninjago plot developments we've had, this isn't even close to being the dumbest. The reaction I had to this lore drop was at first just, oh okay, yeah, he can do that, and then it was just like, there is so much potential for new storylines because of this development. One thing I really like about this retcon is it now makes a lot more sense why the first Binjutsu Master created an ultra-powerful realm crystal. It was to visit his other creations. Beforehand, the first Binjutsu Master kind of just had this potentially universe-threatening in the wrong hands, ultra-powerful realm crystal for seemingly no reason, other than to like go on a holiday to the Never Realm, I guess. But now, knowing that the first Binjutsu Master had a direct hand in more than one of the realms, it makes so much more sense as to why he would create this. The dialogue doesn't specify how many of the realms he made, just beyond saying he made some of the other realms, but the visuals of the scene show four blocks of wood appearing when they say this. I think the implication here is that the amount of realms he made can be narrowed down to four, which raises the question, which of the 17 realms are these? And yes, just in case you don't know, there are 17 realms. The only reason they say 16 is because the other 16 run in parallel to Ninjago, which is the 17th realm. <gasps> okay. So, something I've noticed recently within Ninjago, especially in the Wild Brain seasons and their portrayal of the other realms, is that there has been a lot of humans in these places. In real film Ninjago, excluding the Cloud Kingdom which we'll get to, whenever we've been introduced to a new realm, it's always been home to some new species we've never seen before or some kind of mystical creature. You'll rarely see humans there because humans are from Ninjago. You know, like humans are a creation of the first Benjutsu Master. Right? However, during World Brain's episodes on Ninjago and in Dragon's Rising, we've been seeing a lot more just regular humans in different realms. And that's what I'm going to use to narrow down which realms are made by the first Benjutsu Master. Obviously, this is operating under the assumption that humanity is the creation of the first Benjutsu Master. So, obviously, you have the original realm the first Benjutsu Master made, to our knowledge, Ninjago. We're not exactly sure what order he made the realms in, but, you know, like, this is the first one we see, so I'm going to assume it's the first one chronologically. This was the one we followed in the original series, and the four golden weapons, and yada 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 yada. This is where Wu and Garmadon were born, and the first origin point of humanity. This one's a no-brainer because of the first line of dialogue spoken in the original show. The first Spinjitzu master created Ninjago using four elemental weapons. As for realm number two, I'm gonna say the Never Realm. And I have a bunch of reasons for this. Of all of the realms I'm gonna list here, I think this one is absolutely the most likely to be a first Spinjitzu master realm. My first reason for this is that the Never Realm is the only place across all of the merged realms, excluding Ninjago, where Traveler's Tea grows. 
Traveler's tea was pretty exclusive to Ninjago before we found out about the Never Realm. Case in point being the fact that Wu and the Ninja never used it to escape the first realm. And if I were to throw a bit of speculation out there, I would guess the reason that it's so much more powerful than it is in Ninjago is that the first Benjutsu Master probably powered up the leaves himself and made them more potent when he was in the Never Realm one time. And I mentioned that visit to the Never Realm because I know that when I put out this theory, it's going to be the first thing mentioned to me in the comments. My father only spoke of it to me once in warning. He told me of all the realms of creation. It was the one I should never visit. He told me it was a cold and dangerous place. What's wrong with it? I don't know. He went there only once and said he nearly couldn't find his way home. He said it was unlike the other realms. The dialogue here obviously implies that the first Benjutsu Master had never been to this realm before this one visit and that he was completely blindsided by how harsh the conditions were. The reason I brought this up is because a lot of people are probably going to look at this and think, okay, so that theory is completely disproven, but hear me out. I think the first Benjutsu Master had visited the Never Realm before this. Here is my rough timeline of events. The first Benjutsu Master shows up in some barren world, i.e. like he did with Ninjago when he created it, and created the Never Realm, along with its inhabitants. How I think the first Benjutsu Master approached these other three realms is that whilst Ninjago was his central home realm, on occasion he would check up on his other three realms and make sure they're well. Let's say every month or so. So the first Benjutsu Master just got done checking up on the other two of his new realms, and has decided it's time to check up on the Never Realm. Now, do you guys remember back in Season 11, when Zing got blasted into the Never Realm and then roughly three weeks to a month later, the ninja followed him there. And then when the ninja landed in the Never Realm, they found out that multiple decades had passed since Zane's arrival there, making them realize that time works differently between those two realms. And before people mention this in my comments, if this was such an important plot point, it would have been mentioned in the show, not in the comments of a YouTube livestream. Asphira cannot time travel. I think the first Benjutsu Master had a very similar experience. One month he went there and it was relatively pleasant and inhabitable. The next month he'd went there, 20 years or so had passed, there was a complete climate change and it looked like the realm was completely extinct. Something, assuming the first Benjutsu Master did assume this, he was wrong to think. I think this was the visit mentioned in Season 11, the visit that made the first Benjutsu Master so weary of the Never Realm. Making even more sense when you realize that this was his own creation and he probably had a ton of regret for letting it fall into ruin like this. But beyond that theory on my part, Beyond the Traveler's Tea existing in Ninjago and the Never Realm, beyond there being humans here, there's literally a location named after Wojira. Mala Wojira. Mala Wojira? Wojira's Wrath. I mean, like, come on. I would be shocked if the first Benjutsu Master didn't create this place. The next place we have here is Imperium. My main reasoning for assuming this is just the fact that there are humans here. Like, as much as I'd love to talk more about Imperium's lore and depth and relate it to the first Minjitsu Master, we really don't know much about it right now. Beyond its current state being an imperialistic fascist dystopia that controls its citizens through propaganda and fear. But I will say, Having an Imperium Monastery that mirrors the Monastery of Spinjitsu, which is where the first Spinjitsu Master lives, even ultimately being linked to it via portal, is pretty suspect if you ask me and does add to the pile of evidence that the first Benjutsu Master created Imperium. Now, as for the final realm of all of these, my main contender would be Cloud Kingdom, although the logic around that is really messy and we're gonna get into it. Ultimately though, while I'm gonna say Cloud Kingdom, I'm not so sure, this last one could honestly go anywhere. My main reason for thinking that Cloud Kingdom is a first Benjutsu Master realm is that out of all four of these realms that we've shown so far, the only one that hasn't had a portal that links to the other three has been the Never Realm. And the only reason we haven't seen that, at least so far, is because we haven't been to the Never Realm in Dragon's Rising. Beyond that though, the other three of our suspected realms all have travel gates that go to the others. I don't think this is a coincidence. And I'm pretty sure that there's going to be another travel gate going to the Never Realm. You might be asking me what the metaphysical implications are of a realm that seemingly can write destiny, or at least very closely predict it, coming into existence after a bunch of the realms, at the very least after the creation of the first realm and then Jargu is. Beyond keeping in mind that Cloud Kingdom was retconned a bit in Dragon's Rising to be more a bunch of nerds making really accurate guesses than writing the future 100% all the time, but still, I have no idea. I think this might just be a case of having to ask what came first, the chicken or the egg? Or I guess the ultra powerful Spinjitsu deity, or the set of floating islands full of bookworms who can sometimes predict the future. We'll have to wait and see. The final thing I want to talk about are the travel gates. 
I'm just gonna go for a wild guess here and say the first Binjitsu Master decided for some reason to make stable gates to the other realms rather than using the Realm Crystal and use the Realm Crystal to power them. Beyond that, these things are super mysterious. The only guess I really have for what these are is that they're all linked to the realms of the first Binjitsu Master. And that's about all the hypothesis I have for this one line of dialogue. There's still another about 50 seconds worth of exposition in this clip, so I recommend you watch it yourself. But beyond the first Binjitsu Master creating those four realms, if I discussed everything shown in that clip in this video, we would be here until I'm 50. So for the sake of time and getting this video out before part two comes out, we're going to end the video here. That does not mean that the discussion has to end here though. Be sure to let me know what you think of this new lore in the comments down below and what implications it's going to have for the Ninjago universe as a whole. I'm really interested to get your guys' thoughts on this, so be sure to sound off down there. As always, thank you so much for watching the video and supporting the channel everyone, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye for now. If you feel like watching some more Ninjago videos from me, be sure to click the playlist on screen now.